Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. Welcome to Knife AQ number 62, the Knife Series, where I answer all your questions, whether they're sharp or dull. So for those of you here in the States, I hope you've kind of shaken off the turkey coma and we're just getting right back into the swing of things. So this week we're talking about some Christmas gift ideas. It's right around the corner now. And on top of that, some other cool questions as well. So let's get into it. All right, folks, thanks for all your questions. We always have fun, or I always have fun combing through and picking out some good ones to answer. Uh, if you're new to this series and want a chance to have one of your questions featured in a future episode, real simple. Just leave it down in the comments and maybe it'll get picked for one of the next ones. First question this week comes from Craft Mc and Cheese. Uh, okay, so I'm looking to buy a sort of do-it-all knife with a focus on EDC and somewhat of a fidget factor for roughly $50 or under. A little over that is fine. My top three choices right now are the Elementum, the SOG Terminus XR, and the Spyderco Tenacious. Which would you recommend? Cool. Uh, so three great affordable knives. Um, they all work really well. They're all built really well. Um, but they also are some really good options for... A Christmas gift, which is why you know you're not asking that specifically, but for those of you out there who might be watching this, check these out. These are, these do make some good options. So when it comes to these three particular knives, one of them is very much not like the others, and that is the Tenacious here. Uh, you can get them with uh, G10 or bidirectional FRN for even more texture, and they sit right above or right below that fifty dollar mark, depending on which version you get, and in addition to, well, I'll hold up just one of the others real quick. The Tenacious is a little bit larger and not just on the spec sheet as well. In hand, it feels like the next size up from the other two knives you mentioned. And it's also the, the kind of most workhorsey of these three knives. A little bit bigger, a little bit broader blade, full flat grind, so it's still gonna slice well, but you've got enough thickness there where it's not frail. And you've got a nice full handle experience going on here really solid workhorse knife. Uh, it's a steel here, 8CR13 MOV. So it's stainless, more stainless than the D2 on the other two knives you mentioned, but the edge is not gonna last as long, but it is very easy to maintain. Four position pocket clip, you can carry it however you like. Liner lock to keep things secure. Um, solid, solid option. A Little bit on the larger side, but not too big for a do-it-all EDC. Uh, this is certainly gonna food prep a little better than the others if that's part of your quote unquote, do it all. But this doesn't really have kind of that fidget factor if you're looking for that. Um, you do have Spyderco's thumb hole there, but it's not the, the kind of flickiest of blades. You can do that middle finger flick a little bit, but that's kind of it for the fidget factor. Real solid knife though. Uh, but the other two in this matchup really feel like a much more closely matched match up. Sorry. Um, Game set. But really, the, you know, the things here are very, very similar. Uh, both of them have D2 blade steel. Both of them have flippers. Both of them are just under that three inch mark on the blade length. Uh, both, both of them come with G10 handles typically, although there are some, uh, some other upgraded options available for both knives. And both are priced very similar. Uh, SOG Terminus XR, about 55 bucks normally, and the Civivi, the G10 versions at least, uh, about $50 as well. Um, but actually, if we're talking about gift options right now, a bunch of these Civivis are on sale for a little bit longer, I think. Uh, so that this option right here, this particular Gaborsha wood guy, is only about 56 bucks uh, down from its normally like $64 price. So you might be able to snag a good deal right now. Um, both of them have enough handle. You can just get all four fingers on them, or at least I can with my slightly larger than average hands and they have enough length to get your stuff done. Civivi probably has a little bit better cutting geometry just because the edge itself is so super thin behind the hollow grind here. Even though I tend to prefer flat grinds, the edge is not as thin on the SOG, but it's still gonna be a good slicer, but just between the two, you might appreciate the Civivi a little bit more. So the thing that really differentiates these two, apart from you know those little fit and finish details like that is down to that fidget factor. 
If you want just the best flipping action possible between the two, I'd probably go with the Elementum. Just they do such a good job of tuning their flippers very, very well. And with a kind of more conventional liner lock with a detent to uh, hold that blade in place before you flip it, it's a little more dialed in than the crossbar lock you have on the SOG here, which just traditionally has been notoriously difficult to get flippers to feel good with. But SOG does do a very good job. It's just not quite as satisfying as the Elementum. That's a side-by-side -side comparison only. It's certainly, there's nothing to be not satisfied about with this flipping action. But on top of that, you have extra fidget going on. You've got the thumb stud so you can open things that way. You can give your nice pop open. You've got that crossbar lock so you can do wrist flick stuff very easily which is very fun to do. Uh, and the newest versions of this uh, red G10 version here even have a slimmer pocket clip than some of the older versions. I know people have been looking forward to when they make that switch. And this guy has it right there. So ultimate fidget friendliness between these two, I'd probably go for the Terminus, uh, but ultimate fit and finish between these three, I'd probably go with the Elementum. If you wanna get more work done, I'd probably go with the Tenacious, so. Hope that helps, whether you're buying it for yourself or buying it for someone else out there. Lots of good stuff though with, uh, with that matchup right there. All right, um, next question comes from Mug Days. What do you think of credit card style blades? Can they re actually function as a knife and would you recommend keeping one in your wallet? Sure, another great you know, classic holiday time gift idea is the credit card knife. Um, I'd say mostly, or most of the ones out there, they're a little bit of a novelty, sure. Um, they can be cool. Uh, this right here is probably the stereotypical one right here, the Ian Sinclair Card Sharp, Card Sharp 2 in this case, uh, on sale at the moment for about 10 bucks. Uh, I'm not sure how much longer that sale is going on, however. Regular price is about 20. And it's slim enough to fit in the same space as a credit card but it doesn't really have what it takes to be, I think anyway, like your primary EDC. This is mo mostly a, it's there just in case type of thing. Uh, the blade steel, actually, I don't even know uh, what the blade steel is. Um, it's a simple stainless. We'll just put it put it that way. I actually don't have the, uh, the spec here in front of me, uh, but you turn this little guy out of the way here. Blade itself folds back and then you fold the rest around it to act as the handle. You do get a, uh, a rudimentary sharp edge, but it's thin steel. You don't actually have a full grind on it. You've just got a quick abrupt bevel here right behind the sharpened edge, and the handle is very thin. It'll definitely cut, but probably not what you want most of the time. An option for that, uh, for a more kind of dedicated knife thing that actually can live in your wallet. I like this option from Boker Plus right here. This is the John Kubasek credit card knife and it comes in about 33 bucks right now. And it does have a pocket clip on it and if you're gonna keep it in your wallet, you just remove that and it'll nestle into that credit card size pretty nicely. What I like about this is you get an actual blade steel here. You've got 440C, solid enough stuff, and you've got a solid enough lock here too. Nice uh, frame lock construction, single sided in this case to keep things nice and slim. But thanks to the width, decent amount to hold on to. I mean, it's not a, a ergonomic grip by any stretch of the imagination, but you're not going to like drop it. It's not going to feel fiddly. Now, when you go to close it up, you'll notice we've got a chisel grind on this knife, which normally I prefer a double bevel. But the nice thing about a chisel grind right here is it keeps that sharpened edge closer to the rest of the handle construction there. So it's less likely to snag and cut something else than it would be if it were a true double bevel. So you can see right there, pretty solid little piece of kit there for not too, too much money. Uh, both of these certainly make good gifts. The, uh, especially at 10 bucks, that card sharp makes a great stocking stuffer. Another option you might wanna look at is the Victorinox Swiss card series. Not a folding knife, but you do have several implements inside a credit card sized piece of plastic. And one of them is a knife blade, it's a pocket fix blade, <laughs> basically. Again, this is more of a kind of backup just in case you need it type of edge rather than a primary knife. 
but it's cool in that in addition to, oops, let me slide it back in there properly. In addition to that sharpened edge, you've got a pair of scissors, you've got a nice nail file with a screwdriver tip, you got your toothpick and tweezers, you've even got a small ballpoint pen. Works great in the wallet, also works great in that little fifth jeans pocket and lies super slim in that kind of configuration or in that kind of spot. So you never even know it's there until you need it. And a lot of us guys, we were trying to find things to put in that pocket anyway. So it's kind of a nice thing right there. And about 32 bucks on this guy as well. All right, moving on from the gift questions here, uh, we've got the next question from Edgar Candela. Uh, Hi DCA, any updates on coming knives or companies with MagnaCut steel? It's going to be a year since it was released, wondering why I haven't seen more production knives out of this great steel, thanks. Um, simple answer really, and that's uh, actually basically production schedules. Uh, MagnaCut, it looks to be really great, combines stainlessness with edge retention and a heap load of toughness in a way that no stainless has ever really been able to combine. So kind of a game changing thing for sure. But it was released, uh, I guess like two or so months before Blade Show earlier this year. And the thing with bigger production companies is they've got more than just two months planned out of what they're gonna be doing. And they've also typically, the, the biggest times for new knife releases and announcements are Blade Show, which is kind of in the middle of the year, and Shot Show, which is in January every year. So happening, the, the un unveil of this particular steel, which was kind of a surprise to pretty much everybody, including a bunch of the big, most of the big companies out there, it was too close to Blade Show for them to have vetted the steel, come up with a product plan, come up with prototypes, and been able to have something to unveil in that short amount of time. And we haven't hit the next big unveil section or big unveil time frame yet. So I would expect possibly, like if we're, you know, the first time we're gonna see some production Magna Cut stuff is probably gonna be announced in January. I don't know anything specific. This is purely conjecture on my part, but that's why you haven't seen someone like Spyderco or Benchmade or you know bigger companies, Buck, anyone, you know, announce a big run of Magna Cut knives. You know, until then, basically the only type of stuff you saw at Blade Show made out of Magna Cut was from smaller makers, uh, like my good friend Big Chris right here, who we've got a Magna Cut Honey Badger in stock right now. I'm um, kind of surprised it hasn't sold yet. All the rest of our uh, Magna Cut stuff from him has. Uh, but you saw stuff from individual makers and you saw stuff from the smaller, kind of more nimble companies uh, and the more boutique companies that were able to put out a run of like 10 things, 20 things, 50 things at, at the most or so, rather than a full on production run from somebody like Spyderco, for example, Benchmade, whoever. Um, plus with supply chain things, the way they've been this year, uh, Bench or Spyderco had a big unveil earlier this year, Crewware and Micarta handled uh, Paramilitary 2, and it's taken until less than a month ago for the first ones to start trickling out. And that's been announced for over a year. So for them to expect someone like them to have kind of unreleased a Magna Cut knife uh, in the meantime, probably a little unrealistic uh, for a company like that. But like I said, maybe in January, we'll, we'll have some cool stuff to talk about uh, in the Magna Cut realm on a, on a heavier production scale. Uh, I certainly hope so, just because I'm an enthusiast too, and I think that would be really cool. Anyway, uh, next question here comes from Castulis7. Uh, hi DCA, when I camp and trek, I use my Opinel for food prep and to strike my ferro rod. Is the K-Bar Dozier a good alternative for this job for a one hand opening system? I'm looking for lightness, sliciness, and inexpensiveness with a crisp spine. Is the D2 coating a problem for the spine? Sure, let's talk about the, uh, the Opinel first. Um, really cool knives for, especially what you're using it for. You're talking about lightweightness, it's a 1.6 ounce knife, practically nothing. And you've got a great lightweight profile with a very ergonomic handle. And you've got a very slicey blade profile, gonna work great for the food prep. And the spine on these knives is pretty crisp. And especially, I like doing this, especially in the closed position for this knife, it's crisp enough you can strike a ferro rod. Unfortunately, that's not something you see too much on pretty much any other production uh, folding knives. Usually that, even if a blade is uncoated, usually that spine is not crisp enough to do it. 
Um, moving on to that Dozier as a possible recommendation, since you're looking for a replacement to your Openel that can also open one-handed, the coating here definitely rounds off that corner. And that coating itself is probably, on this knife, is not gonna be hard enough to work on a ferro rod anyway. Uh, but price on these, very affordable, 32 bucks, 2.2 ounces on this guy. So it's not gonna work out of the box for the, uh, the spine crispness for your ferro rod. It's gonna work well enough, I think, at the food prep. What you're probably gonna wanna get into is modification in this case. That's kind of the next logical step since there's nothing that quite exists in the market to satisfy your needs. Uh, if, if anyone out there knows an, of an option, one hand opening with a crisp spine like that, let me know, um, but I can't think of one. So a few ways you can go about modding a spine like this. The easiest way is to use just a flat stone and a lot of time to get to it. Uh, you can use things like a work sharp, uh, one of the belt-based grinding attachments uh, or belt-based sharpeners. You can use bench stone grinders, that, so, that sort of thing. But the easiest and least expensive, albeit time consuming, would be working on a stone. Different, uh, or I've got a couple other options for you to look at though. Still gonna need to do a little bit of modding, but possible thing to look at is the Victorinox Sentinel Swiss Army Knife. Uh, slightly similar or more similar vibes to your Openel than that K-Bar. You do have one-handed opening uh, you've got stainless steel, you've got a locking blade. It's kind of a, a backwards liner lock in that you have to push towards the front rather than away from the front to unlock. So it's a little bit fiddlier to use if you're a righty. Uh, lefties, of course, rejoice. That's a knife practically made for you folks. Um, 2.5 ounces on this. So a little bit heavier than the Dozier, but not by much. You got a little bit more reach. Steel's not gonna hold an edge as long as that D2, granted. You got toothpick and tweezers as well, but you are, again, gonna have to get in to modding that. Actually, something like a Dremel might even work pretty well here, because you could flatten out this section in front of the one hand opening hole and have a little bit of kind of concavity when you go to strike that ferro rod. Another option to check out would possibly be, if you can stand a little bit of extra weight, go with something like the one hand trekker. Same blade profile as that Sentinel, but you get some more tools. The weight does go up to about 4.5. No, Thomas, you measured it earlier. What was yeah, 4.6. 4 4.6 ounces. So definitely a little bit heavier. If you're going for ultra light, this might be a turnoff, but you do get a very excellent wood saw for a small pocket size saw. These work great. And the spine on these saws is very crisp. So you can set that saw down put your uh, ferro rod on there and draw back, you're gonna get some nice spark off of that. Might be a bit too heavy though. So basically I've showed you these three things to show you the last one. If we're talking about modification and you know, you're talking about keeping things inexpensive, um, this is probably gonna be the easiest for you. Go with something like the Bird Harrier 2 from Spyderco's sub-brand Bird. About $31 on this. The spine is not crisp enough out of the box. You're gonna have to go in onto a stone, but because of the shape of the thumb hole there and the hump, you're gonna have a lot of clearance there when you put that on the stone for your hands. It's gonna be very easy to do that, whether you're doing it on a stone or even like a, uh, I've, I've seen people use a uh, just a standard belt sander too. Same type of thing. Be careful about overheating the blade and you know stay safe while you're doing it, obviously. Lightweight enough here. I mean, we're at uh, 2.7 ounces. Uh, there's some smaller versions of these knives out there if you wanna shave off even a little bit more. Full flat grind, 8CR steel, solid stuff, very slicey. Gonna be a good food prepper. Check that guy out with a little bit of uh, TLC. That'll probably do what you want. All right, now we get to the lightning round for today. First question's from Larry Blair. Uh, my friend at work, who's a Vietnam vet, gets all excited about Zolingen steel and his old Randall knife. Would you give a brief explanation of why that's such a big deal? Sure, uh, and I'll try to keep this brief. I, I think this is maybe a, a halfway lightning, slow, slow burn lightning question. Weeds graphic at the ready. Shoot. Uh, so a note about Zolingen steel, um, it doesn't really tell you anything about what the steel actually is. All it tells you is that the knife was made completely in Zollingen, Germany. And typically, especially some of the older stuff, but even through to, through to today, Zollingen made stuff is very high quality. Uh, likewise, Randall knives, 
very high quality. And especially, you know, you're talking about, you know, a Vietnam vet. Randalls were certainly famous before Vietnam, but I think they got even more famous during Vietnam due to kind of a legendary durability and quality. Um, when it comes, however, to like the best that the uh, knife industry can do nowadays, the world has, has changed a lot since the Vietnam era. And to consider like a Randall or an old soling and knife, like the byword for the absolute best, it's not quite the case anymore. Certainly good stuff and certainly stuff worth getting excited about, just like this Randall Model 16 right here. But to think just because it's a Randall or just because it's a soling and made knife that it's the absolute best and nothing can beat it, not quite the situation. It's a little bit of an out, you know, outdated or outmoded way of thinking at this point in time. Anyway, I don't know. Did the weeds stay a little, stay okay? We'll see. All right, we'll see. I guess you guys will know because I haven't seen the edit yet. All right, next question uh, comes from Eric Straordinary. Uh, DCA, you guys recently did a great video on identifying knives solely by feel while wearing a blindfold. Yes, we did. I had a lot of fun making that video. Mm. It was enjoyable. Um, I challenge you to do a similar view video with you identifying folding knives solely by sound. Um, you know, this might have been intended to be a most serious question of the day, but you, you might laugh, but you know, we'll never, I'll never be able to guess all the models, but I can kind of tell a pro tech by the sound of their opening action. That's, that's a pro tech. I, I could have told you that blindfolded. Would have never have been able to tell you the model. Oh, this, this is a cool uh, CQC7 exclusive here at the Knife Center. Um, I don't know. pro -techs have a unique sound. I dig it. I don't know where I was going with that question. <laughs> the weeds know. Oh. Next lightning round question comes from Grumash. Uh, hi, DCA. Of all the commonly available knives, which one is the most likely to make you look like a doofus? I don't know. Something like this? Maybe. Next question comes from Michael D. Carolis. Uh, hey, DCA and crew. I seem to have messed up the crisp spine on my LT right Genesis a bit. How do I go about getting it back to good as new? Um, we talked a little bit about crisp spines earlier. LT right knives are certainly known for coming with a very crisp spine. Uh, I don't have a Genesis, but this is a Bushcrafter HC with red linen micarta. We just got a nice new uh, restock of these guys. Uh, about 120 bucks for this guy. You can certainly uh, do it manually. We talked about stones. We talked about some other powered uh, methods for getting these back to uh, back to crisp. You can also take advantage of a company like LT. They've got a great warranty service, which can include kind of a spa treatment. You can kind of fluff and buff it, get your spine back to crisp. They'll sharpen it up for you, make it look good as new. So it's like a chiropractor for knives. Sure. We'll go with that. We'll go with that. <laughs> Which brings us to our most serious question of the day, which comes from Blood Groove. And I'm already mad about your name, so I'm going to call you Fuller from now on. David, I'm going to the North Pole to help Santa wrap gifts this year. Due to him housing so many elves, he doesn't have room for me, so I will need to make an igloo. What knife would you recommend for chopping ice blocks and shaping an igloo? Well, Mr. Fuller, it's got to be this guy right here, right? I mean, it's the ice series from Ontario, and it's the Glacier Wraith. That'd do it. Eh? I mean, it's blue. It's going to blend into the snow really nicely, so you don't have to worry about marauding penguins or uh, polar bears or anything like that. How are penguins getting all the way up there? I don't know. It's a magical place. Santa's up there. Fair enough. Actually, no. I have a better suggestion than this. Ugh. Clearly, it's got to be the carcass splitter, right? Clearly. Clearly. Well, that's all the time we've got today, folks. Again, thank you for, let me put this down. I don't have, so I can use both of my hands. Thank you for all your questions as always. And again, to have a chance to have one of yours featured in a future installment of this series, just leave them in the comments below. If you want to get your hands on any of these knives, we'll leave links in the descriptions as always, which will take you over to knifecenter.com where you can see all the latest pricing too. Like some of these things, like I said, are on sale right now, but if you're watching this video later, may not be anymore. While you're over there at the Knife Center, make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program. 
so that when you put your money down on one of these knives, whether you're for yourself or as a gift for someone else, you'll at least earn some free money to spend on your next knife. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, signing off. See you next time.